So you might have already watched Jimmy and how he talks about how he felt when we left Australia and why we gave up on Australia. But if you haven't, please have a look at it. It will be linked up here. So I'm going to get into how I felt and my story of when we left Australia about two years ago. So I'm Pauline and I am the other half of Jimmy and we are Mitch's on the horizon. We left two years ago from Australia and when we first left for us it was a 12 month trip to see as much of Southeast Asia as possible with our two kids and homeschool them. So when we first discussed it, it was at a really, really low point of our lives. We were not feeling very happy in Australia. I was feeling really overwhelmed. For me, it was just the daily grind. It had come to a halt for Jimmy in the sense of his feelings, but he's been all through that. And for me, we just needed a change. Something needed to be different for us. My day looked like getting up at 6.30, feeding everyone, making everyone's lunch boxes for the day, dropping everyone at school to make sure everyone was there on time with all their bits and pieces, their library bags and their hats and books that were due back. And I was that working parent that would literally run through the gate and run back out again and not even have time to say hello or goodbye to anyone. I would then turn up at the office right on time to have our morning meeting with everyone and then I would sit behind my desk and I would do my work until 2.30 when I would have to leave to be in the school run traffic to pick them up and I would get home and I'd still have to work and our kids would play or go outside or be on technology until it was dinner time and then over again it was dinner, bath and bed. So at this point, it was, what do we do? Jimmy had floated around the idea of either traveling around Australia, traveling overseas, or moving somewhere else. But if we moved somewhere else, we were just gonna have the same issues. So we decided that traveling around Asia was going to be the best option, and it was going to be a whole lot of fun. And it is a whole lot of fun to go traveling with your family, however, a whole lot of things have to happen before you can leave. Now, I'm talking there was lists, like I'm a list person and my to-do list was huge. We were in a rental house, so we needed to end our lease there, which was gonna be an early termination of our lease. And the our lease also came with making sure all the maintenance was done and the cleaning was done. We then didn't want to store too much and my parents weren't in a position of holding any of our stuff at the time because they were buying a different house. Jimmy's parents didn't want to hold any of our stuff so we had to go and find a storage unit. That came with a whole lot of issues as well. So you can see our to-do list is now becoming larger and larger. We also then still had an office that our employees were working out of and we had to let our employees go. We then had to let our office go as well and we had a whole lot of furniture there. So you're now looking at furniture in a house, furniture in an office and our lives are literally being sorted out from now until we left. We had, I think it was four or five months in this time that we were ending our tenancy and then we had booked our flights to leave. So throughout this time, it was very much I'm not going to say traumatic, but there were some highs and there were some lows because I had very mixed emotions. I love the idea of traveling. I love the idea of going, but physically letting go of all the possessions that we had purchased. We had spent all of our hard earned money on buying a car and a caravan and furniture for a house and toys for the kids and just all those bits and pieces that you don't realize you accumulate all the time so I had extremely mixed emotions at this point so majority of our stuff had gone we would put all of our stuff that we wanted to keep into storage because we didn't have any other options and we didn't want to part with it it was that weird do we don't we do we don't we kind of thing like there was random bits and in the end when it came to deadline we were throwing stuff in that storage unit because we just had no, no other idea of what to do with it. 
So we've now gotten to the point where we've moved out and we're in this in-between stage. So we had to go and live with the in-laws, which is hard going and living back with your parents after so many years. And then once our tenancy agreement was up with the office, we had to go and sort that out also. So this was a lot. This was a lot to grasp in a four to five month period. And my emotions were really toying with me by this time. By the time we got to this point of, I think it was January and we were leaving in February, I was like, are we doing the right thing? Like we have literally, we have just given up absolutely everything we own to go and do this trip. And for how long? We've told everyone 12 months. Are we going to last the 12 months? And so I had to then just get over that. I was like, no, this is an experience of a lifetime. And we just, we need to just go and do it and experience it because life is so short. We had... Jimmy's mum who's in care in a nursing home on full care because she's got dementia. My dad had a stroke at 52 years old so that was like 14 odd years ago, 15 years ago that he had the stroke. And you then take it into perspective that our kids were seven and eight when we left and how much time had we actually really spent with them, like proper dedicated time with our family because of businesses and work and stuff like that. And you calculate it and it's not a lot. So we had to go, we had to go and do this trip. And we left and it was an absolute euphoric moment. We were there, we had sold everything and we had packed our suitcases and we were ready. We were ready to go. The first month is always the hardest. And I'm not gonna say this lightly for me, leaving my family and friends was one of the hardest things I have ever had to do. It is not easy saying goodbye to people and saying, we'll be home in 12 months, but we might not be. We're not really sure when we're gonna see you next, but we love you, we'll talk to you as often as we can, and you'll see us on all these platforms. Yeah, that is not an easy thing to do. And then because there's distance between you, you're not in someone's face every day. The thought you have, oh, I'll just message this person, they don't have the same thought as that either because they've got their daily day-to-day -day grind. We're here and we're working only a minimal amount of hours a day and spending it with our kids and going on experiences. Our friends weren't in that situation. So when, you mess when I was messaging people and really wanting to have a conversation, they weren't available. They weren't available. And you would really have to schedule in that time that you wanted to talk to your parents or your friends because they're not doing the same things. They don't have the same amount of spare time as you do. So that first month for me, or first three months actually, was the hardest emotional thing that I've ever had to do. And still to this day, it is not an easy thing to, to be away from family and friends. I know people say, oh, don't worry about it. It's not as hard as you think. It, it is, I'm gonna tell you it is because I did not realize how much I was emotionally attached and still am to my friends and family and how much I needed them, how much I do need them like every single day. So for me, that first three months, I could have packed it in and gone home easily and just been like, I'll deal with the consequences of not having anything, but I'll be home. Once I got past that, and I don't even know what it was that clicked or changed, I'm really not sure what it was. But once I got over that and out of the fact that I was missing everyone, which I still was, it was still there, but not on the day-to-day -day like it was in that first three months. Once I got over that and realised that I was spending the amount of quality time I was with the kids and with Jimmy, it made it so much easier because our kids changed. They then wanted to talk to us wanted to be with us and it was just easier in everyone's eyes because we weren't then having those arguments that we were when it came to bedtime because they knew that if they didn't go to sleep we couldn't then do the thing that we wanted to the next day so there became this like realization for them 
that there were consequences and there's always been consequences but for some reason at home it was never the same it was never the same consequences as it is now so just getting them into that routine of traveling knowing that we have to be somewhere at some time at a certain time you, you have to instill that in, in them and that's what happened they realized that to get to the airport we needed to pack we needed to get our suitcases we needed to get transport whatever it was that routine has now become instilled in them so that's how traveling has changed our kids and changed our family now it has been a roller coaster to get to this point so we are like two years in and we have just settled in Malaysia for another 12 months um, but I actually still have the pull back to home and I'm not sure why I can't tell you why it's just always there in the back of me that needs to go back home I don't know whether it's mum guilt because our kids aren't in school they aren't seeing their friends all the time I don't know if it's because I miss my friends and family I do physically miss Australia just the ease of going to the grocery store like the the ease of of food conveniences because here you really can't get dairy products like really nice Greek yogurt and cheeses and that stuff for an anti-pesto platter I, I always miss that because you, you can't get it so is that pulling me back and I, I really haven't pinpointed what is physically pulling me back so I can, I can definitely say that there is always that feeling that I have in the back of me that's wanting to go back and I can't explain it I can't explain why over the past two years my emotions I think they would have been exactly the same as being in Australia because the living situation we would have had to find another rental house um, our expenses would have gone up our business would have had the same pressures same issues so I think I've traded that for this lifestyle so it <laughs> It's, it's really hard making this video to tell you that I, I still love Australia even though I live in Malaysia and I love this lifestyle there's still a part of me that wants to live the Australian lifestyle and we will we will down the track but at this point in time we are trying to do everything we can to set ourselves up to, so we can live um, that Australian lifestyle without having to battle and fight every single day for me traveling has helped in that situation hasn't helped with the mum guilt at all that that is forever there that does not change across the board and i can tell you that now whether you're in a different country or whether you're in your home country it's the same traveling is absolutely amazing but it doesn't come easily you don't have to have millions of dollars or thousands of dollars to do it but you have to realise that it's hard because every single day you are deciding where you're going next, when your visa's going to run out, your accommodation, food, are you, even the unknown because you've got no one to fall back on. So it's just you and your family doing the best that you possibly can in a country that is unfamiliar. So yes, traveling is, is fun, but it's also very tiresome and very hard to do. I highly recommend it because obviously you become very, very close with your family. But yeah, you find the little quirks of everyone. So for me, leaving Australia, like it, it was extremely, extremely hard for me. I know Jimmy says it was easy for him and I think it was. I think he was done with Australia very black and white. For me, I, I still love Australia. I really miss my family and friends but obviously with digital technology now it's a video call or a message or a phone call away so it is really simple but you do have those days that you cannot get to that family member or you cannot get to that friend just you know time pressures and stuff like that and people being busy and you have to deal with it you just have to think okay I'll talk to them tomorrow or I'll take the kids out now so we can go and have some fun and, and, and not think about it. So I have found it really hard and I still find it really hard and I'm not going to lie about that, it's not, it's not an easy thing to do. I still have the pull back to Australia, I still want to live this lifestyle but we, I don't know how long before but obviously 
we're in an amazing country and I just pinch myself every day that we were able to do this and no matter how much longer it is for it doesn't matter we have had this experience and yeah I love it but I also have very, very hard emotions that I have to deal with yeah leaving Australia and going traveling was one of the best and one of the hardest things I could possibly ever do but I would do it again in a heartbeat. If we get back to Australia and we want to do it again, I would definitely go and just do it again. Maybe I'd do it a little bit differently, but yeah, it, it is definitely a thing you have to experience because traveling long-term is completely different to traveling short-term. If you ever have any questions, if you ever want to talk about it, if you are traveling at the moment and you feel the same way as I do, that you have these massive emotions, let's talk about it because it is not an easy thing to be doing and the criticism that you do get from some family and friends is really hard to deal with as well. So yeah, it that's just how I feel. I am ecstatic to be traveling, but you have to deal with the emotions that go along with it. Drop me a follow, drop me a message. I'd love to talk to you about it and see how you are dealing with it, whether you're dealing with the crisis of living in your home country, whether you're thinking about traveling and want to talk more about it. We are here, we've been through it. It is definitely a thing to do, but it's it does come with a lot of other things you have to think about. Don't lose your Australian phone number, and do you have a storage unit, and do you have a bank account that you can take overseas, and all that kind of stuff. So it's a roller coaster. But I'd love to hear from you all, and this is just my story of how I feel and how I deal with traveling with my family while we're overseas.